Well, today we come together underneath the mantle of this prophetic word given by Charlotte Baker in 1980, the eye of the needle, the gate of worship. I said, Lord, how should I start this? Well, the song of a century, heart of worship, because that's really what the prophetic word was calling us to, to go through the eye of the needle and be small. And then go through the gate of worship, bow low in adoration and devotion to Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Yeshua, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than than a song Lord Cause the song in itself is not a one you have required. I'll, you search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. It's all about you. And 
and hardly anything about me. Verse 2. King of endless world, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, and all I have is yours, every single breath, I'll bring you more than a song, cause a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart come on everybody let me Come to the prophetic word entitled the eye of the needle the gate of worship it's a prophetic word or a modern story or parable parable delivered by Charlotte Baker at the National Worship Symposium in Dallas Texas 1981 every word is weighty and applicable to our lives yet today. Miss Carla starting it up. Well, we're sharing this word because it is so foundational in who we are and what we've been in ministry for these 40 some odd years. She begins by saying, I have brought this people together today to make unto you a choice. You can minister unto men, or you can minister unto the King of Glory. I stood among the sons of men, strong and tall. My heart was filled with enthusiasm. My life was given to the purposes of God. Upon that day I said to the Lord, I will do mighty exploits in the name of my God. The Lord came unto me and he said, What is it, son of man, that you would have? I said, Lord, if I could only be among those who play sweetly upon an instrument and who sing well in the house of the Lord, then I would do great things for my God. The Lord came to me and he gave unto me the desire of my heart. He let me play and he let me sing. I saw the day when the hearts of men were moved by that thing the Lord had given unto me. After hearts of men were moved, I stood back and I said to myself, now I will be content for I have been able to move the hearts of men. But in my secret hour, I bowed my head before my God. And I said, Lord, you have given me what I asked for, but my heart is very heavy. I have a longing for something more. So he came again unto me in the night season. He asked me again, son of man, Ask me again the thing that you would have of me. Lord, I said, I see men bowed low 
bowed by burdens low. I see hearts that are broken. I see sadness and discouragement. Oh, give me the power of the spoken word that I might speak the word and their hearts will be delivered. And the Lord came unto me and he said, Son of man, I've given to you the thing that you have desired. So with great joy, I marched before the people of God. And in my youth and in my enthusiasm, I spoke the word and men were delivered. I spoke the word and their hearts were made whole. I knew what it was to bind up the brokenhearted and to pour in the oil of joy, replacing their mourning. While men were yet praising him and glorifying his name, I went back to my secret chamber and I bowed my head in sorrow. I said, oh my God, my God, I'm not yet satisfied. me and he said son of man what is it that you desire of me and I said oh my God give me power in my hands that as you did I might lay my hands upon the sick and see the healing flow he said unto me it is done as you have commanded God healed the sick. I went to the nations of the earth and I saw the sick raised from their beds. I saw pain and suffering go away. I was rejoicing as I went to my secret place. I bowed my head before my God. I said, now my God, I will be satisfied for you have given me that which I have desired. No sooner had the words come out of my mouth when the heart within me began to ache and cry. I said, God, I don't understand. Again, my heart is sad. Lord, will you just one more time give me the thing I ask of you? He said, it's done. God, I desire to go against principalities and powers, the powers of the wickedness of this world and spiritual darkness in high places. He said, surely. I give it unto you, now go. So I went, and the Lord allowed me to go into dens of iniquity, the holes and the dives where men hide from the light because of their sin and the evil that's upon them. There was a day when I saw demons cry out at the very presence of the power of God that rested on me. And then I went back to my secret place, broken. I said, God, I have asked you for all that I desired. And still my heart is not yet satisfied. Nor do I feel that I've touched the thing that you have called me to. Nor do I feel I've touched the thing that you've called me to. In my youth, I've expended myself with all the things that my heart had desired. Then one more time, a gracious and loving God visited me in the night season. He said, now, what is it that you desire? And in brokenness of heart, I bowed before him and I said, only that thing which you desire to give unto me, Lord, hear me. God, only the thing that you desire now to give unto me. And he came unto me and said, come up with me and I will take you on a journey. He took me past my friends. He took me past those with whom I had come in to the house of the Lord. He took me into a desolate place. He caused me to go into a place alone in the wilderness. I said, 
Oh my God, what are you doing to me? You've cut me off from those I love. He said, I take you to the place where all men must come if their heart's cry is to be fulfilled. At a certain hour, I bowed before a gate that is called the eye of the needle, the gate of worship, the eye of the needle, the gate of worship. There, before the eye of the needle, I heard the voice of the Lord say, bow low. So I bowed lower. He said, yet lower. You do not go low enough. So I went as low as I could possibly go. But I had upon my back my books of learning. I had with me my instruments of music. I had with me my gifts and abilities. He said unto me, You have too much. You cannot go through this gate. I said, But God, you've given me these books. You have given me these abilities. He said, Drop them or you do not go. So I dropped them. I went through a very small gate that is called the eye of the needle. As I went through this gate, I heard the voice of the Lord say, now rise to the other side. As I rose, a very strange thing happened to me. You see, the gate which was so small on one side that I must lay aside everything was now so wide that I could not fill it. As I stood in the presence of the Lord, I said, God, what is this thing that you've done unto me? For my soul is now satisfied. He said, you've come through the gate of worship. Now come up to the circle of the earth and I will show you a great mystery. I will reveal unto you the thing that I'm doing among the sons of men. The Spirit of the Lord caught me, caught me away. He took me to the circle of the earth, higher than where the eagle flies, beyond where the clouds can rumble, beyond where the sun shines or the moon finds her path. And there, at the throne of my God, he said, look down. Look down upon my people. And I saw strange things. I saw my companions gather. They were gathered around a very small gate that is the eye of the needle, the gate of worship. And I saw them wringing their hands and they were crying. They were crying. They were saying to one another, but God has given me these instruments of war. This sword is my sword and I will work with it against the enemy to bring him down. I cannot go through this gate for if I go through this gate, I must put down my sword and God has called me to be a warrior and therefore I will not do it. Wow say, me? Lay down my instruments of music? Lay down all God has given me just to go through that silly little gate? To be nothing but a bare man who comes out the other side stripped of everything? I cannot do this. I saw them as they stood aside in their pride, afraid to bow themselves before a very small gate. Then I saw again, as the Lord brought me closer to the gate, I saw a man bow low, laying down everything that he had. As he came through the very wide gate on the other side, his instruments of music were there, his sword was there, his books were there, and the power was there. Word of the Lord came to me, 
Go now and tell this people before you, I have given unto this people extreme talents and much ability. But I say unto you today, if you do not come through the very small gate, God. which is the gate of worship, and bow low, and lay before me your instruments, your talents, mm -hmm. your abilities, your vision, and power. You will always be among those who will only be able to minister to the hearts of men and bless the hearts of men. But there is a gate open to the church in this hour, a very small gate. And through this gate, only men and women who are worshipers will go. These people will lay their talents before their God. And these people said, Lord, we will be your worshipers. These people are saying, Lord, we will be your worshipers. And through that wide gate, they will come and they will arise on the other side, not to minister unto men, but to minister unto their God. You see, it won't be to minister unto men, but it'll be to minister unto their God. So I brought you together today to make unto you a choice. You can minister unto men, and I will cause you to sway the hearts of men with your talent. Or you can go through a very small gate that is the eye of the needle, the gate of worship. And while making new worshipers, you'll minister unto the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Wow. Wow. Carla, number one thing for you in our history, but also it still applies today. What is the most important things here? My God. Mm. Well, I thought back to a time when I was in the prayer room at Destiny and I'd be pacing in the back and the Lord would say to me over and over again, you know, this is not about you. Wow. I'd say, I know that, Lord. Mm. Mm. I really don't want it to be about me. He said, no, overall, it's not about you. Universally, yeah. It's not about you. And I said, it's all about you, Jesus. Uh, the whole book uh, from Genesis to Revelation, it's all about you. And what Father God is going to do with you. Mm -hmm. We're just family. Yeah. We're just there to see you through. I, I to think, see you do. I, I think, hon, To worship you. People in general before they meet the Lord and then after, they, yeah, well, what about me? What about me? It's, it's kind of an American thing. I'm sure there's other nations developed that have it. But I think that's so important to start with here. I, I, don't, I know you for certain uh, because of your mom and, you know, your love for Jesus and stuff. Uh, your three children, nine grandchildren, it's really never been about you. And I, it actually, I think for me, it's the same way. Because people say, Kent, why are you different than all the other worship leaders? I said, well, I want you to listen to me closely. He saved my scrawny little life down here on this earth. And he's worthy of it all. There's two reasons that I worship. Not lead worship, I worship. See, there's a difference in having a badge. I'm a worship leader. Well, I'll be the judge of that. I'll let you know when I see you worshiping. So being a worship leader does not make you a worshiper. You could be filling a slot. This is so important what you just started with. So let's go back up to the top on page one. Well, I do want to say yeah. this, that I think the reference that God was making when he was speaking to me wasn't just about individual people. It's right. not about me. It's not about you. Right. I think his 
this reference was actually to the the system that the church has built. Oh man. And that is that, you know, it's all about what we're Us. doing. Yeah. It's all about who we are, what we do, uh, whether or not I'm happy, whether or not <laughs> my friends are happy, whether or not we're fulfilled in God, whether or not we're doing what God wants us to do. Heaven forbid we, we should seek him about that, but, <laughs> you know, and, and it's we, really not about any, any gatherings. <laughs> Remember this old song that Bob Beckett used to sing, we are gathering together unto him. <laughs> we are gathering unto him shall the gathering of the people be. We are gathering together gathering unto him. Together unto him. It's a simple little chorus. Yeah. Well But I see but but in this whole prophetic thing, I see a gracious and loving God. Mm who desires to give us these things that our hearts desire because they're righteous before him. Every one of these things that she spoke out was a righteous request before the Lord. Mm. I want to exalt oh. you, God. I want to worship you. I want to speak your word and see men delivered. Oh I want to go into dives where men hide and bring your light oh to humanity that's lost mm. and hurting. I want to do all these things. And God graciously, granted. graciously <laughs> granted every single request, knowing fully well that at the end of it all, they would not be satisfied. Because of him. It's because intimacy it's with him. him. And I want to say this, hon. Does the church on the corner know what the church down the street is doing? When I look at the Book of Acts community, they broke bread daily. They listened to the apostles' teaching uh, and they spend a lot of time together. So I, it's it, there's a downside to our American first always and all this stuff is that w we forget that we're to be the helpers and servants of other people like Jesus. And the humility thing is, is like super huge. Like uh, it's all about us. And I said this for years and you picked up on it. There's four churches at a major, uh, you know, crossroads. Two, there's a four-way stop. There's a church in each corner. It's a big, like maybe it's a circle, town, town circle. And the one across the street, if Jesus showed up, they wouldn't go over to see him. And so there's something wrong with that. But I, I want to go back to what you're saying. See, when she said, well, I, I numbered them, the ones that you just talked about. Lord, if I can only be among those who, number one, play sweetly on an instrument, I can actually do that. I've had people come in the room. And I can't. And, and, <laughs> well, but, but here's what I'm saying is I've had people, even men and women of God, you know, at our house and Kent, would you just pick up your guitar, play on the piano? And I, I remember one guy, he was out for an hour on my couch, on our couch, and he was so refreshed because to play Sweetland, it, it seems like, well, that, but it doesn't jump the Lord, his person, and the anointing. So she said, play sweetly on an instrument. And then uh, as we go down, number two, now, I, you know, I, I wasn't satisfied, so give me the power of the spoken word, uh, which they did. And then number three on our page two, well, uh, I want to have power in my hands to do as you did. And then outrageously, number four is God, one more time, I want to ask you, I want to go against principalities and powers and the powers of wickedness and spiritual darkness in high places. And he says, surely I give it to you. Go. So four strikes and you're out. In this case, it wasn't three. And yet she did the right thing. Or the, the people that are like this come, Lord, I, I don't want all the stuff and things. I want you you are, are what will satisfy my interior, the desire of my heart. So much of God's people, so many of God's people are walking around and they're not satisfied. There's not, they're not satisfied. Keep trying to fill the void with all kinds of things. Well, if I just could make more money or if I just had a bigger house or if I just had more friends <laughs> or if I just, you know, had a better social life. If I could build my business and if I could become famous. Mm. And yet when they lay their head down on the pillow at night, they're not satisfied. Mm. And they don't yeah. breathe a sigh of relief. That's another productive day before the Lord. It may not have been. But God is gracious. 
And if you really do seek the Lord, he'll come to you and he'll say, this is what you need to do. And the very first thing is to be, is to worship me and understand that this is all about me. It's all about Jesus from beginning to end, from in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth to the end when the new Jerusalem comes down and settles on <laughs> on Israel. It's all about Jesus. And God the Father has no problem with that. <laughs> we see all through the word that he's making preparations to hand it all over to him. And then in the end, Jesus hands it all back to, to, to the God Father. the Father. It's just... Uh, it's not about us. Well, I want to say, hon, I, I, his presence is our equilibrium. And the bottom line is whenever we've run into worshipers, even if I've travel by myself, I could be in a hotel foyer area. I could be anywhere. And you're going to know worshipers. There's a, a peace connection. and a joy. Yeah. There's a shalom and a joy on them. Uh, and this, I, I wanted to point this out because... Um, people don't want to, they don't want to go through rough stuff and it's got to be all of a bed of roses. It's never that ever in life. But uh, when on our page too, and people were watching as this crow by, uh, one more time, the loving and, gra and gracious God visited me in the night season. And now what is it that you desire after the four major things? I mean, that's not wrong to actually ask for those things, but it doesn't jump the Lord himself. I mean, these are just things that you'll do. Out and of it the doesn't attribute. even aggravate him when you do. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, a, a, a parent, a, a natural parent would get aggravated with their child. Because, give me this, give me that, give yeah. me this, give me that. Yeah. And they're never satisfied, yeah. you know, and yet... Our gracious Heavenly Father just graciously well, grants our requests. It's a journey. It's a journey. He knows we're growing and we're maturing. But th this, 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 I, I thought I'd weep when I got to this part. Well, and I was reading it. Uh, what now, he, the Father, our God, ask him, ask her, what, what is it that you desire? In brokenness of heart, I bowed my head and I said, God, only the thing what you desire to give me. I have found myself praying That's accurately, it. accurate praying, Lord, g give us what we're able to, you know, sustain and understand and walk out and walk in power. And I, I, I don't want 10 years from now, right now. I mean, you, you know, best uh, your way is the best way. And the only way, again, the three wills that you did to me years ago, I've never forgotten it. There's God's will, there's Lucifer's will, and then there's a the will of men. And the Lord is proving to everybody on the planet, my will is the best way and the only way. But I, I love it that that this person, it was Charlotte Baker prophesying, we're saying her, but it could be, you know, a guy, obviously. God, the only thing which you desire to give me right now. And so he came and said, well, come with me and I'll take you on a journey. Oh, buddy, you get ready. So he took me past my friends and he took me past those who I'd come into the house of the Lord. Here it is, a desolate place. You see, if you trust him and know him, it doesn't make any difference if it's a stormy place, a desolate place, a uh, sunny, sunshine day place. It, but it, it kind of set him off. You could tell right there. But he caused me to go into a place alone in the wilderness. And I said, God, what are you doing? This sounds like us in our immaturity. Lord, what, don't you love me anymore? It's really hard. And he says, you've cut me off from those I love. And he said, I take you to the place where all men must come if their hearts desires to be fulfilled. And that's at the end of yourself. That's it. Go to the end of you. Because I said, the end Lord. of yourself and every, oh. every, everything you've surrounded yourself with that you think is going to satisfy you. I said, Lord, Except let me have your zeal. I want your strength, but but only to do your will and purpose, not to show off with it, not to be famous, as you said before. Uh, anyway, I want you to speak to this in this name, the eye of the needle, the gate of worship. I, I had to look it up because the door within the door in the gates of Jerusalem is a small door in the larger door when Psalm 24 said, everybody hang with me on this, it's really powerful. When they, the merchants came late to the city of Jerusalem, they're not opening up a big gate to let the enemy could be hiding in the weeds and the bushes and run in. There was a door within a door or a small walkway that if their camel, if they had a camel, they had to unload their camel 
camel and shuffle their camel through on all fours and then go get this stuff. Otherwise, they could they had to stay outside the city at night. So the gate of the uh, the the eye of the needle when Jesus said it's easier for uh, you know for a camel to go through the, the eye, eye of, of the, the needle, needle, he was speaking to the door within the door. Uh, it's not going to be easy. It's just this thing. It might take you 15, 20 minutes, but you're going to get your camel through because you're not opening up the big door. You're going through the eye of the needle. It's not a scary thing. It was a provision of a door within a door that they didn't open the giant door to the city. And you have to bow. This is important. Bowing, kneeling, adoration. The eye of the needle, the gate of worship, the gate of worship that we went through. What do you say to that? Huh? Wow. Well... Is there humility? Musicians, well, when singers. You, when we stand before the Lord, Woo, here we, go. <laughs> we won't have anything but ourself and our heart and our attitude. We won't have our ministry. We won't have instruments. We won't have things. But, but Lord, I did this to bless you. Wow. You know, we won't have anything except ourself. Well, there'll be fruit. You, the, he keeps track of the fruit you bear for him. But Well, yeah. you will, but I'm saying you yeah, won't. You're not. Yeah. That would be to your credit there in heaven, but you won't take it with you. Wow. Got it's you. It, The Bible says, <laughs> where your treasure is, there's your heart also. Store up for yourself oh treasures in heaven where thief and moth, where thief don't steal and moth don't corrupt. Right. So how does it get there? Mm. Well, it's, it obviously gets there ahead of you. It's ahead of you. Mm. Got it. And so when you go, right. you know, you're not going to stand there with anything. But what is this attitude, hon? Let, let's just get on this for a minute. We have a few minutes left before we leave the stream. When he said, bow low, I bowed lower. And he said, yet lower, and you didn't have got low enough. So I went as low as I could go. And he said, you can't go. You have too much. So let, let's stay on this for a second. Uh, you see, I had upon my back my books of learning, my backpack. I had my guitar and my flute recorder. I had everything with me, my instruments of music. I had within, I had with me all my gifts and abilities. And he said, you have too much. You cannot go through this gate. So I, I remember this guy came through and did this seminar, and I had a problem with it, and I talked to Pastor Bob about it. This guy was saying, he wants you to put your guitar on the altar. As soon as he started into this, and I'm from the world, I wasn't like church kid or Sunday school kid. I said, you're wrong in that, bro. I was sitting out there thinking in my mind, he doesn't want my wooden instrument. He wants my heart on the altar. And Bob confirmed. He says, yeah, that was kind of off. There's a few other things that were off. And I'm actually calling the guy, and I'm going to tell him, you need to probably change this. They got on certain beats are of the devil. And I'm a music major. I go, then they're all of the devil. If We can't use any of them for God. But I'll never forget that because... I've always seen my guitar, my piano. They're just instruments. But he won in my heart all along. Um, where are we at today with this, with the everything else that's going on? Huh? I, because then later on, the same thing happened with her friends. They, they did exactly. What is that that we want to keep and possess all this stuff? Our accomplishments. I mean, we have to have our accomplishments. Mm. Otherwise, who are we? What are we? Mm. We're just mere children of God with mm. same as the next child of God, the one next to you. But, uh, but I was thinking while, uh, while we were talking about that, about my own journey that I've been on since December with this whole cancer thing and, uh, and how I had a decision to make. And the decision was whether or not I was going to, uh, you know, just do, do nothing and believe God for supernatural healing, which is. Stop rocking. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Which is, you know, what I would choose to do normally because, you know, we're people of faith and I've seen God do so much in that. And yet at the same time, I, f I told the Lord that however he wanted me to walk this out is how I would walk it out. And uh, and this was what he chose for me to to do this. Now the very cool thing is that at the end of it all, I'm cancer free. So you know everything that that they did that that we walked through, what it worked like it was supposed to work, and it doesn't normally like that. And and most people that have what I had, 
there, there are not good outcomes. There really are not good outcomes. And this was a good outcome. And at the same time, when Kent and I look back on it, we see every step of the way God had divine appointments for us to keep people we needed to sow seed in, people we needed to water seed in, people we needed to, to know about the power of God, to know about faith and what it's like to walk through situations like this without depression, without fear and anxiety. And so, you know, God knows and he knows your life. But what I was determined about, and that was that I was not going to roll over and give up and let the devil win in this attack on my physical body because he's, he, uh, you know, he uh, overstepped his bounds and trespassed on something that belonged to the Lord. And me, as a child of God in the kingdom of God, had to put my foot down and say, no, I will not leave this earth one minute earlier than is my destiny to do, and I will walk out my entire destiny in the Lord. Well, I think just to close out, um, the realm of humility is all over the prophetic word, even what you just said. Um, I think it was Andrew Murray wrote a book on humility. Um, it's not arrogance. It's not pride. It's the opposite. And I think, um, well, we're his servants. We're not our own. And somehow the Lord helped us, and there was proper teaching that we didn't get all full of ourselves and didn't think more highly of ourselves than we ought. In the world, uh, I played basketball in sixth grade. I was a high-level player in high school. I was a swimmer, baseball player. And um, you can be full of yourself if you want. But but I think when I met the Lord, I said, Lord, we, we know so little. We see through a glass darkly down here. You can have all my books of learning. You can have all my musical instruments. He goes, I wanted you. I wanted you. I had a whole episode about six months ago where the Lord, I was in the car driving Highway 100. He said, I love you. I said, well, yeah, Lord, I know. I've done that. He goes, no, not because I love you. Not because you work for me. And he kept it up. And I, you know, it was kind of get unnerving. And yet I, then I finally relaxed down and said, oh, you love me. And so we see here, we're back to your accomplishments. Hey, thanks for being a top flight singer and a worship team on a church of a thousand people. But we just love you for who you are because you're important to Jesus. And I think as we uh, see at the end of the prophetic word, I saw my friends, they were standing before the eye of the needle, the gate of worship. I saw them wringing their hands and crying. They were saying to one another, well, God has given these, given me these instruments of war and the sword is my sword and so on. And I'm not going to do it because the humility factor was not present for you to do something the Lord wanted you to do. And I'm a small man. I've really chosen that the last couple of years. It's probably been longer than that. But we're small people. And as we obey the Lord, the blessing will come in that. And by the way, the end result is that without all those major four things she was doing, she was satisfied with what? The presence of the person of the Son of God. Being able to minister directly to God. Give me a final thought, Not to man. men. Now we're out of here. Mm. Well, ultimately, that's, that's the end result, is that we minister to God. And that He is... Years ago, I'd, I'd sit in the prayer room at Destiny, and I'd be in there when my youngest daughter would be doing a devotional set. And it was so beautiful. Just me. Sometimes it was just me in there. And she'd be singing and pouring out her heart before the Lord. That, God, why is there nobody here? And he said, because this is just for me. <laughs> and I said, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. It's called the audience of one. So I throw up my hand and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is this hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, 
I'm nothing else fit for my King Except for my heart singing Hallelujah this prophetic word the eye of the needle gate of worship you can tell 1981 it's still speaking today we'll see you real soon god bless shalom shalom
Thank you.